Welcome to Metal Casting Lecture Series by Prof. Joyjit Ghosh. This is the fifth lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on sand casting molding sand. He will be discussing about constituents of molding sand, sand additives, types of molding sand, synthetic sands line zircon, olivine, chamote. He will also discuss the properties required of a good molding sand. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture on metal casting. This is the lecture 5 of a series of lectures that I am going to deliver on metal casting. We were discussing sand casting process and as a part of sand casting process, I will be discussing in this lecture molding sand. We will be discussing different types of molding sand and we will be discussing uh, the, the properties that is required of a good molding sand. So let's start. See one, the principal molding material of a sand casting process is molding sand and molding sand consists of silica grains moisture and clay so let us discuss this the principal constituents and how much each is composed in a molding sand or required in a molding sand so we'll start with silica sand grains it contains around 80 to 90 percent of the molding sand consists of dry silica it is a granular quartz uh, and uh, it is the main constituent of a molding sand. Now the reason why we add sand, silica sand grain is because the sand grains impart refractoriness. Refractoriness means resistance to high temperature. They do not get fused at a low temperature. So that is one advantage. It is chemically inactive and of course because there is sand grains so there is space between each individual sand grains so that the gases can escape and you know the sand grains varies in size and varies in shape so each is very important and we will be discussing this in minute about what type of sand should be used and what should be the size of the sand that is also very important in molding sand apart from that it also it contains certain oxides of aluminium sodium magnesium calcium as for it material of course we require water in molding sand to make it moist now why do we require to make it moist because the clay acquires its bond bondness uh, bonding power in presence of moisture so how much we should add uh, moisture normally is thumb rule around four percent is best for bentonite clay so it varies from 0 0.1 0 0.5 to eight percent eight percent is quite high actually so uh, you can take it from me Around 4% is the best percentage for bentonite clay, of course. So, we also have clay. Clay is basically a natural RD material which consists of a fine silt and true clay. Now, fine silt is basically a foreign material which is basically of no, uh, don't have any bonding power, which is not used of no use in molding sand, but true clay is important to us. And true clay gets its bonding power in presence of moisture. So how much clay we should add anywhere anywhere between 5 to 20 percent 20 percent is obviously extremely high so around 8 percent uh, i would recommend um, for normal sand casting around 8 percent <laughs> again that will depend um, on the type of casting you are with the machine molding you are doing or uh, manual molding all this should be taken into account <laughs> now the clay can be of two types kaolinite or fire clay or bentonite now bentonite is much more popular because bentonite is much more permeable uh, however fire clay has higher melting point so again bentonite can be of two types calcium ion based and sodium ion based so in india basically uh, we use bentonite as a molding sand clay additives apart from uh, the silica grains the moisture the clay the certain additives are also added to the molding sand 
uh, some facing materials are added to make the uh, sand smooth so these are coal dust silica flour and this forms the face of the mold these are normally not mixed with the entire molding sand rather it is added to the face of the mold facing sand uh, the facing sand are silica flour and coal dust so that the pattern does not stick to it and it and the, it comes in contact with the extremely high temperature so the refractoriness of these facing materials has to be high the cushion materials now when the molten metal is poured in the mold cavity the heat is temperature is extremely high because of the high temperature the individual sand grains expand now when it expands if it does not find space to expand the mold will crack and if the mold cracks uh, the shape of the casting will be spoiled therefore we add certain cushion materials like wood flower cereals now this cushion materials when it comes uh, when the temperature increases this cushion material burns and uh, gases are evolved which passes through the vents now when it burns it creates space for the mold molding sand to expand so that is the importance of cushion material i repeat this cushion material burns uh, because of the high temperature and uh, it gives enough space for the uh, <coughs> molding sand to expand. These are the various types of additives. So if we classify molding sands according to its nature of its origin, we can say some molding sands are called natural sands. These natural sands are the sands that are available in sand pits near river beds. <clears throat> so, some advantage of is that natural sand maintains moisture content for a long period of time. They are cheap, cheaply available. The time for mixing the binder is saved. No extra equipment for mixing the sand and the binder. Disadvantage: they are less refractory and the, and then synthetic sand because of the impurities present. Applications mainly for light casting, mechanized production of casting with few coats. Then we have synthetic sands. Synthetic sands are basically which we mix and we make. Mixing the bentonite or the clay and the sand grains, rice silica sand grains and moisture. Those are mixed together to form the synthetic sand. <coughs> so advantage is the highly permeable. permeable and have high refractoriness, moldability with less moisture. So one of the disadvantages is that it is costly and it needs extra time, equipment and manpower to prepare the sand. Applications are heavily coat casting, mechanized productions and high pressure molding. For that we will be using synthetic sands. And we have certain special sands. These are of course synthetic sands. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, special sands like zircon sand. Zircon sand is zirconium silicate. The sand has low thermal expansion and high heat conductivity, greater density and high refractiveness. Now, because these are special sand because these are uh, used for certain special applications only. So this sands, zircon sand is used for bronze casting, alloy steel, chrome steel, manganese steel, uh, etc. Olivine sand. This is orthosilicate of iron and magnesium. I'm oh, sorry, manganese. It has high density, conductivity and refractoriness. It is used for casting of non ferrous steel and intricate casting. Chamati sand uh, <coughs> is produced by calcining high, high grade fire clay at about 1000, uh, 1100 degrees centigrade and crushing it to required size. So if calcining it, it will form a lump and then you crush it. You will sand that you get, the grains that we get is basically chamati sand. Uh, it is cheaper compared to that of zircon and olivine and it is used for heavy steel casting. And chromite and chrome manganese, mag magnesite, it has high refractoriness, high density and chilling power. It is useful where chilling tendency has to be increased to control the solidification of where we want to solidify the casting fast. So that we will be using chromite and chrome magnesite. <clears throat> These are some of the special sands. And of course, we can classify sand based on the initial condition and use. That is green sand. Green sands are basically uh, <clears throat> moisture having high moisture content uh, <clears throat> around 6 to 8% moisture 
and around 18 to 30 percent clay that are called green sands. Dry sands are sand free from moisture are called dry sands. It processes greater strength than green sand. Loam sand are 50 percent clay and 50 percent sand. <coughs> And facing sand, facing sands forms the face of the mold. It is used directly next to the surface of the pattern. And it comes in contact with the molten metal. Therefore, it should have high refractoriness. Basically, dried silica sands, some uh, coal powder is used as facing sands. Now, we have backing sand. See, uh, uh, it is a sand which backs up the facing sand and fills the rest of the flux. That is called the, uh, it may be a sand which has already been used. Now we have parting sand. The sand employed on the faces of the pattern before molding is called parting sand. The parting sand consists of dry silica and burnt sand. The parting sand is used to avoid sticking of the green sand to the pattern. Then we have coarse sand. Coarse sands are basically sands that are used for comb making. Uh, it consists of silica mixed with coal oil. Uh, coal oil uh, is mixed of linseed oil, resin, uh, resin, light mineral oil and other binding materials. Then we have system sand. In mechanical foundries where the machine molding is employed, uh, what the sand that we use is called the system sand. It is used to fill the entire flask. So these are various types of sands, molding sands. Now very important, what is the properties of good properties or required properties of molding sand? The first and most important property is permeability or porosity. See, <clears throat> when you pour molten metal in the mold cavity, uh, gases will be evolved. The molten metal may itself uh, have some dissolved gases which has to escape. Plus, uh, the temperature of the molten metal will cause the moisture uh, <coughs> in the sand to evaporate, to become steam. Now, this has to find way to escape. Now, if the molding sand is not properly permeable, that means permeability is the property to allow the passage for the gases to escape. So highly permeable means it allows the gases to escape easily. Low permeability means it does not allow the gases to escape easily. Now therefore it is always desirable to have high permeability. Now the problem is that if it, if it has high permeability, the surface will, of the uh, casting will be rough. So there has to be a trade-off between permeability and surface finish. Now permeability, what it depends, how it depends on what factors. First thing is that it depends on the grain size and grain fineness. If it is fine, the permeability will be less. If it is coarse or size is big, then the permeability will be more. Same. If it is angular in shape, uh, if it is round, the permeability will be less. If it is angular or sharp, then the permeability will be higher. And the amount of clay or binder that is used. If binder used is more, then the permeability will be less. And of course, the moisture content. The permeability uh, increases initially with moisture and then it decreases. <laughs> so these are the factors that affect the permeability or porosity. Then we have plasticity or flowability. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, flowability means it is the ability of the molding set to acquire the shape of the pattern under pressure and retain it when the pressure is removed. Of course, this increases with clay and moisture content. Adhesiveness. The molding sand should stick to the surface of the molding box while handling. That property is called adhesiveness. Then we have cohesiveness. Is the ability of the sand particles to stick to each other. Then we have green strength. Green strength is the strength of the sand in moisture condition. And dry strength is the strength of the molding sand in dry condition. That means when you pour the molding metal, the moisture evaporates and uh, that is becomes dry and the strength of the sand at that state is called the dry strength and <clears throat> above 100 degree when the, it becomes then the strength that is there of the sand is called the hot strength refractoriness obviously uh, molding sand will come in contact with the molten metal at a temperature which is very very high so the molding sand should be capable of withstanding such high temperature so that property that property is called refractoriness. The higher the refractoriness, the better it is for a molding sand. Collapsibility. Now, uh, the molding sand has to, the mold has to be broken in sand casting and so that the casting can be taken out. So, collapsibility is also important. If it, if it becomes too hard, 
it will be difficult for us to break the mold. The coefficient of expansion. <coughs> molding should molding sand should possess low coefficient of expansion. Otherwise, the mold might crack if it expands um, <coughs> large. The expansion is large, then the molding sand the mold may crack. Fineness. The molding sand should be fine. So the finer it is, the better it is. The fineness will improve the surface finish, but firmness will also decrease the permeability. So there has to be a balance or trade-off between fineness and the permeability. And base life. It is the ability of the molding sand to retain its property during storing, handling, and uh, <coughs> and while standing. And of course, the molding sand should not be chemically reactive. So these are the properties of molding sand. So grain fineness already I have discussed the permeability is affected by the fineness of the sand. I'll show you some graph here. You can see the finer the sand, lesser will be the permeability. The higher, the coarser the sand, higher will be the permeability. <coughs> okay. So uh, moisture also. If you increase the moisture, the permeability increases. Okay. But after a certain period of time, the permeability decreases with moisture. So why this happens? This happens because and initially uh, the moisture increase uh, the moisture does not affect the permeability or rather permeability increases. But after a certain period of time, additional moisture or uh, water fills the gap between the sand grains and does not allow the gases to escape. And therefore, uh, extra moisture will block the permeability or reduce the permeability. So here you see uh, the bentonite has more permeability compared to fire clay and you can see here uh, for bentonite the 2% you can see the permeability decreases gradually with increase in bentonite and with 4% with increase in bentonite the permeability is somewhat retained. So 4% is a thumb rule for bentonite. You can see with coarser grains the permeability increases and for shape angular the permeability is higher for round then permeability is lower okay so okay sand conditioning see so, uh, certain sands like silica sands or the synthetic sands we prepare has to be mixed so it is done in a sand molar it is this type of molar the sand is mixed <coughs> the silica sand is mixed with bentonite and moisture and other additives are added and it is rotated so everything is mixed then air is passed so that the flowability of the sand is there so all this is this process is called sand conditioning or sand preparation so sand molding machines we will be discussing in the next lecture if you have any doubts uh, please feel free to contact me i hope you have liked this lecture thank you for patiently watching this video thank you